No. Five basic steps to writing. Here's where the fun starts. So, test your paper. Um, paper tends to come in many uh, uh, grades, obviously, and weights. Um, what I found is that there are a few manufacturers that make really, really good paper. But having said that, I've had great success with uh, Muji notebooks. Um, I yeah, just basically like a couple of Ringgit notebooks uh, off the shelf. But my favorites still tend to be uh, the middle of the road papers, like the Rodias. Um, a Rodia tends to be a great French uh, manufacturer of paper. And um, Rodia actually is made by a company called Claire Fontaine, and they make amazing notebooks as well. Um, I just got this one. This one was about ooh, 40 ringgit. Uh, and they come in all sorts of different sort of prints. This is called a dot grid. I don't know if you can see the faint dots here, sort of to guide your writing. Um, it comes in the hat shape. What do they call it? Like when you draw graphs, the little squares. Anyway, you'll see it. And then, of course, blank. I like blank too. I like, I do like my blank paper. But mostly I write on dot grid these days. Oh, I bought some uh, really, really cheap notebooks off a shopping site called Lazada. And they were something like 750 each. Seven ringgit 50 cents works out to be about a, a, a dollar and a half or maybe less. I don't know. Yeah, dollar and a half. So really cheap and the paper was brilliant. It doesn't feather. Now feathering is basically when the ink sort of bleeds uh, out the side. So when you write with it, like when you write with a, a fat marker pen and it sort of bleeds around the sides. Now when it bleeds through the paper is when you can see the ink on the flip side. That's bleeding, not feathering. Yes, so lots of new little terms for you to think about. So, step one, to summarize, test your At this point, let's talk about the parts of a pen. I think it's good to know. The nib is obviously what you write with. The feed actually holds a little bit of ink for the nib whenever you, it's sort of like ink on demand. The section is the part that you hold the pen with. The barrel houses the converter where you have the ink. The cap and clip allows you to clip it to your pocket and cover the nib. And the converter is your ink reservoir. Please take a moment to click subscribe, like and smash that notify bell. And I'd love to hear from all of you. So please leave a comment below. So our thought of the day section, I think I can take off my glasses for this one. Any case, in any case, one thing I had in mind for all of you today was that when you are alone, mind your thoughts. Um, sometimes I find, especially when I'm in a worrisome situation, money, um, relationships, that sort of thing. And I've had this quite a lot recently, especially with the um, the COVID-19 thing. When I'm alone, all of a sudden, all these things start to come into my mind. What if, what if, what if, what if? If I had a dollar for every what if I had, oh my God, you know, I'd be a millionaire by now. I guess I'm a bit of a worry wart by nature. But basically, mind your thoughts. Um, actually, our thoughts come from somewhere. They come from how we grew up, the experiences we had, the, 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 the negative and positive, everything, it comes from there. So if you notice that some people are a lot more, um, I 
hesitate to use the word positive, but a lot more, um, they're able to compartmentalize, they're able to put things in perspective a lot more easily than you are. I, I find that that's the case for me. I really have to guard my thoughts. I really have to sometimes tell myself to shut up. So <laughs> I actually sometimes look like a madman doing it. But at the end of the day, hey, it works. Um, it's a process of reconditioning, almost restorifying. You know, and I use that word deliberately, restorifying yourself. You have to tell yourself a different story um, so that, you know, you can get over this hump, you can get over whatever worries you have. And that's really important to realize. So for today, the thought of the day is when you're alone, mind your thoughts. Now, Let's start writing. So I use uh, certain phrases which actually encompass or, or comprise of the letters A to Z in the entire sentence. Sometimes the letters will repeat, but uh, there are two I absolutely, absolutely love. So what you want to do is to take hold of the pen and um, hold the section lightly. Don't squeeze it. Don't squeeze it till your nails become white, okay? Uh, you're holding it too tight. Most people who hold ballpoint pens will do this. But just grasp it firmly but lightly, okay? And write. Now, one of my new favorites uh, of A to Z phrases is O Sphinx of Black Quartz Judge my vow. Let's try another A to Z here. I'm going to use my pilot vanishing point. This has been something I've wanted to do for so long. And oh yes, nibs can also come in stainless steel or gold. Stainless steel nibs tend to be firmer gold nibs tend to have a little bit more spring to them which makes them more comfortable to write with but again um yeah it really depends on what you want gold nibs are more expensive at the end of the day and this is a gold nib it's been anodized black but um it's a beautiful beautiful pen so here we go the quick brown Fox jumps over the lazy dog. And if you've noticed with the pilot vanishing point, it's a bit like a ballpoint. In that, um, it clicks in and out. I love this bed. I love this bed. So, O Sphinx of Black Quartz, judge my vow. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So, back to the tuning of the nib. Point three of writing with a fountain pen. Write as naturally as you are able. Don't press, I think I talked about that already. And if your fingers turn white, uh, you're pressing too much. The pen should glide across the paper. Now, the feel of the pen, that toothiness that I talked about. Um, funnily enough, this Twisby, the Taiwanese one, has a German nib in it from a German nib manufacturer called Yovo. And they tend to write a little bit more European in style. Whereas this Japanese one has that Japanese toothiness. So, you need to decide what you like, basically. And again, no right or wrong. I suspect it's to do with the script in terms of how people want to feel the paper. Um, because uh, fountain pens are like brush pens in the US, or brush brushes in the US, I mean the US. 
Fountain pens are like brushes in Asia. So some people like to feel the paper underneath their um, nib and some people don't. And that's the Europeans. The Europeans tend to like it like almost like smooth as glass. Now, you may need to practice writing again. So this is point four, practice writing. Lots of good websites out there. Um, just have a look, Google uh, cursive writing. What I've done here is called cursive. All the letters are joined. Some people just write script where the letters are not joined. Both are, if there's nothing wrong, there's nothing right with it. But have a look, um, cursive tends to be a bit more old school. The letters are formed a little bit more differently. But yeah, just have a look, see what you like. So there you have it in a nutshell. There are exceptions to all the generalities above, but you know, at the end of the day, variety is the spice of life. So go out, have a look, test out your pens, and enjoy yourself. And I think that is pretty much what fountain pens are about. It sort of makes everything into a little moment for you. It's not just pitting, picking up some uh, ballpoint pen uh, and scribbling with it. It's, it's picking up a pen and knowing that you are about to do something momentous. And thanks so much. We'll see you again on Nigel's Joys, where I hope you'll come and find your joys with me. Give me a follow on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Nigel Skelchie.